I'm Jean Marx Lima, and joining me today is Christian Kofutz Solam, Nordic Sales Director at Bulk Infrastructure, to talk about Norway's and Denmark's data center market in 2022 and beyond. Um, Christian, welcome to JSA. Thank you so much for talking to me. Um, yeah. I mean, Bulk has had a really busy 2021, um, and as we are starting now 2022, uh, you're set to have a really busy 2022 as well. Um, but before we talk about Bulk itself, what can we expect from the Norwegian and Danish data center markets uh, in this new year? I think uh, for, for Norway especially, we see that Norway is maturing as a data center nation, um, mostly because of the new fiber networks being put in place for Norway. Uh, so you have um, the helpful cable going from Norway and Denmark into New Jersey. So the first uh, transatlantic cable linking Norway directly to, uh, to the US, which is a, a huge um, thing, of course. Uh, and also uh, the sort of sustainability point of view for, for many companies uh, all around the world. Uh, finally realizing that, that Norway is actually a real green place to go. Uh, we, see, we see that um, our, our CO2 emission per, per kilowatt hour in Norway is on a national level eight grams, uh, which again, compared to Netherlands or, or Germany is where we're reaching 400 to 500 grams per, per kilowatt hour. Uh, so we see companies that want real physical green power, they, they, they turn to Norway now. Um, yeah. No, that, that's interesting. I, I didn't know about those big numbers. Um, and it's a massive difference, especially from a country like Germany, uh, where we have one of the largest states in the markets in, in, in the world, not even just Europe. Um, but Talking about bulk, what, what, what has the business been up to? Because you do have quite a lot going on. You've got, you're expanding into Denmark. You've got fiber uh, systems, subsea systems as well. Um, give us an overview of the, um, the bulk realm um, and what are the market drivers um, for bulk? So the market drivers are pretty basic. I would say we are trying to enable the Nordic region for, for the rest of the world and especially Norway. Um, for, for a long time, we have seen Sweden uh, being uh, a good place for data centers. Um, and we see that primarily because of the networks, the fiber networks in, in Sweden have been in place to support this growth. Uh, then we have seen Denmark coming uh, along as well, being closer to continental Europe. So it's easier to get multiple fiber pairs back to the sort of main regions of, of Germany, uh, Netherlands, uh, UK. Um, but we see that that the Norway now with with all of the networks is is getting ready for this. So so our focus right now is utilize the assets that we actually have, um, and and the assets is in Oslo we have a huge data center. Uh, we call it the Oslo Internet Exchange. Um, Seventy different networks, four IXs. Um, yeah, can get up to twenty megawatt plus. Um, so it's a it's a metro data center. Uh, typically, and then in, the, in on my background, I have our N two one campus, which can be the largest um, data center campus on renewable energy, hundred percent renewable. Um, you see a trafo station, transformer station in the background. It's three point six gigawatts, so we are basically neighbor to a very large renewable uh, power station, and it's also the landing station of multiple subsea cables. So it's sort of a combination of renewable power, subsea systems. Uh, and short short time to market. Um, and then for, for Denmark, we build a, a smaller data center, but we have a lot of options to to scale and, and grow there. It's it's right next to where Facebook recently announced a new um, data center to be built. Um, and it's also sort of the landing station for Cobra Cable going to the Netherlands, um, How Hengsten Cable going to UK, uh, Dana is going to Iceland. Uh, then we have a new subsea system called House Seal going from Esbjerg to Kristiansand. And it's sort of, it's combining all of these different assets, both, both partners and our, our own, um, bringing them to life and then making ready for the market, basically. Okay, this is interesting. Um, you, are you of your opinion that um, no, uh, the Nordics could serve Europe um, from a data center standpoint? So some people used to argue a few years ago when we still have physical events, uh, one of the big topics was that uh, we could put all the big data centers in the Nordics and then we'll just put the edge points across Europe uh, to service the market and even in a way slightly down to the north of Africa. Um, do you think that, that there is still something that um, people are still looking at? Is that a, uh, an idea 
um, they're still on the table or you think we will see more really just the decentralization of larger data centers and then the popping out of like smaller edge um, locations? I think that um, I would I would call it the reverse edge where you basically move the workload <laughs> away, away from the cities and, and into the more sustainable areas. Um, I, th I think the issue is there's a lot of um, legislation and um, regulations that prohibit this. Um, there have been some issues with latency. I think that's also sort of, um, you see the Nordics, it's, it, look, it seems to be far away, but from this campus in Kristiansand to Frankfurt, it's sub 15 milliseconds. Um, and you can have multiple fiber pairs if, if you like. Um, and I think it's sort of been, it's, it's too easy to do something in Frankfurt, for example, even though you hear about the markets being being uh, sort of uh, jammed, there no, no power, no space, then you, they keep developing new space. Um, so I think what we will see now is, is people getting more clear on where they put their workloads since, mm -hmm. since it, the networks and the sort of communication between um, the intelligence and the compute will get better uh, with more networks in place. Uh, so I see heavy workloads in the Nordic, hopefully, and then the intelligence sticking in uh, in those core markets. Hmm. But I, yeah, I, I would say that the 3.6 gigawatts we have here in Kristiansand, it, it could support a, a lot of the Norwegian, uh, no, sorry, uh, the a lot of the uh, European workloads. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I would, I, I don't know exactly how much the entire of Europe produces or consumes in terms of um, energy. We know that at least the four big markets, and I'm probably Dublin as well. So the five big markets, they are about two. 2.1 gigawatts so um there might be that station right behind you might have enough power to power the entire <laughs> um, data center economy of europe of today <laughs> we, fun, fun enough we have done calculations and it would yeah. land about 3.6 but again growing market and there i would say go. i would say that we, i think moving workloads is is more difficult but with the sort of demand coming up then then you need to be more uh, not creative, but but think a little bit more where you actually put your your loads, uh, and maybe also put a megawatt in Frankfurt and and ten megawatts in Norway, maybe. Yeah, yeah, balance things out. Um, and Christian, you kind of already touched uh, on what I'm going to ask next, but um, you you mentioned some expansions in Denmark. Um, let's talk about expansions. What, what are you working on to launch um, as bulk um, new locations, new products, new services, but especially locations? Where are you going? Mm -hmm. um, we just spoke about bring stuff in the Nordics? I mean, are you going to expand in the Nordics? Are you going to start building smaller things around Europe to then bring your traffic into the Nordics? Um, give us an overview of what's the plan. Yeah, it might be a bit boring from bulk, but we are right, right now we're sort of using the assets that we have and really getting focused on, on those assets because we really mean, think they have huge potential. Uh, Christian Sand, um, I, again, has such a huge potential but it needs to be we need to focus on actually getting this to the market um and and for esberg it's a totally different play in esberg that's a new uh, connectivity hub for for the northern part of europe so i can't say that we won't do anything but but we really do have a, a strong focus on on actually using the um the data centers that we have in building and and connecting those to to our fiber networks that we have in building but but also making it much easier for yeah basically um, companies all around the globe to connect into those regions. So we we do do partnerships with global carriers to actually being able to support um, yeah companies with a port in in New York or a port in, in in Frankfurt or port in Singapore where you easily connect into our data centers. Um, yeah. And uh, I mean, I'm speaking about partnerships as well. You've recently announced the partnership with uh, the Kicks. Um, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm talking about, and you can correct me. Yeah. Um, talk us through the partnership. Um, what, what does it mean? What makes it unique? What does it bring to the table? Yeah, it's uh, it, it has been a long journey. So it's DKICS. So, uh, okay. so I kind of got it right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's quite quite right. So Deutsche Commerzbank Internet Exchange. Um, so. DKX uh, is the largest uh, interconnection platform in the world. Uh, 85 terabits of traffic going through their, their systems. Um, India, um, Europe, US, it's, it's, it's a massive machine. 
and um, the, the journey with them have been over three years actually. Um, so we came up with the idea that we thought you should build an internet exchange in Kristiansand since we are building new cables into a region then we can use this as sort of a gateway into the Nordic region. Um, uh, and the main focus was not to travel into those congested uh, bottlenecks that we, we see. Uh, so meaning, meaning Copenhagen, Stockholm being sort of a little bit more east and also um, yeah, be, being yeah, not congested, but you see bottlenecks there that, that can be avoided. Uh, so we reached out to to Dickix for yeah three three and a half years ago and said you should build an internet exchange and then we have developed this product uh, all along and 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 the sort of idea is to to do three things so to do local peering um, in those new markets being Esbjerg and Kristiansand where you can sort of take the traffic as it lands in the country and and distribute it in the local regions and then do a distributed uh, peering or remote peering into those mega regions like New York or Frankfurt or Singapore, India, where you basically can produce sort of content traffic in, in Norway and easily get it distributed out to your home market without thinking about extra co-location, extra different kind of carriers to support this. Um, and, and then also, um, being a huge interconnection platform for cloud services, et cetera. Um, so that's the, that, that's the main thought about this. And, and of course, DKIX, they, they are huge in, in, in mid Europe, uh, Marseille, Frankfurt, uh, Madrid, uh, Portugal, Barcelona. Um, so they wanted to look north as well to be part of this, this green journey. Well, which makes sense. I mean, if it's green, it has to be in the Nordics as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think, uh, yeah, if you, yeah, there are many ways of being green, but we, we look at the physical part of being green and, and to us, Norway is a, a good choice uh, to lower your carbon footprint. Okay. Uh, and then, Christian, last question. Um, so the, recently your government announced uh, the data center strategy. Um, what's your thoughts on that? How do you expect this to evolve? Um, what, what do you expect the outcome to be in the next few years, not just 2022, but even beyond that? because um, your government seems to be very involved. I mean, all the Nordic countries, um, government seems to be quite involved in the industry, which is quite unique compared to some other countries, um, even across Europe. Um, just, just share your thoughts, just, just very briefly, on, mm -hmm. on the, um, the initiative. I think it's, uh, it's, of course, positive that you have a government that wants to support, uh, support this. Also, government seeing that we, we need new alternatives for, for Norway. So... Uh, we, we have been huge on, on oil, of course, uh, mm -hmm. which, which can't continue. Um, so to, su to support sort of the future growth of, of Norway, we call data the new oil. Mm -hmm. And we see a lot of our employees working as technicians uh, on critical facilities, et cetera. They come from the oil business. So there will be a natural uh, shift uh, there. Um, but also that we can use a lot of the excess power that we have in Norway. There are a lot of I call it green pockets. There are a lot of areas that actually have a lot of power. Uh, Christiansand being a good example. Um, and I think the, the government realized that this power needs to be spent wisely uh, and also have clear directions for the data center industry. Um, I think also that a lot of industries will be battling about power. Um, and if you just have renewable, that's one thing that's good. If it's physical renewable energy, but also having excess of renewable energy is, is important uh, going on because you have the transport industry, you have so many industries that needs to be electrified. So uh, it, it's so important that you, you find the right spaces and the government can help you sort of develop the right spaces and, and, and areas to build the right data centers for, uh, for this. And also yeah. supporting new fiber networks, et cetera, with, with, with government funds is, is of course important to support this journey. Yeah, no, it's it's good to see a government actually taking proactive action um, in helping to build rather than helping to um, put a massive legislation wall mm. um, in front of the sector. Um, yeah. And Christine, if people want to know more about bulk and leak kicks and everything that you guys are up to nowadays, um, where, where they can go to? Of course, uh, our our web page, so bulkinfrastructure.com, have a lot of information. Um, follow us in the media. We do we do a lot of exciting things. We will announce new partnerships and new, new stuff uh, going forward as well um, and of course we will follow, follow the clients as well so if we are being asked to build somewhere then we 
we might just just do that. But yeah, bulginfrastructure.com would be a good place to start. Okay. Well, Christine, thank you so much for your time. Um, and I hope you keep well um, with everything that's going on again. Uh, thank you to our viewers for tuning into JSA TV and JSA Podcasts. And don't forget to check our social channels for more content. Until next time, happy networking. Thank you.